everybody. Welcome to the Hallmarkies podcast. We have a new star in the Hallmark scene today. Uh, she is the star of the new film, A Christmas Tree Grows in Colorado. And we have Rochelle Aids is here. And uh, I'm Dr. Rachel Wagner. And Rochelle, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Hi, Rachel. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited. Yeah, it's great to meet you. And uh, so what we've been doing the last few months is asking our guests uh, what the whole quarantine experience was like for you. And did you do any uh, quarantine baking or puzzles or anything like that? Well, yes, quarantine was very long. Um, In the beginning, my husband and I and our dog, we made the best of it. At first, it was fine. It was really nice. We cooked a lot because we normally go out to dinner often. Mm -hmm. So we started making breakfast, lunch, and dinner and making these huge breakfasts. Like, you know, we are vegan. So we do like vegan pancakes and bacon and all this stuff. But, um, (laughs) and it was fun. Um, we played a lot of, uh, uh, Monopoly. Oh yeah. (laughs) <laughs> Get some really long games. Yeah, we didn't do any um, puzzles, but we did play Monopoly and he would always win. So just, <laughs> <laughs> and that wasn't that wasn't fun. So you get the boardwalk. That's the key. Whoever gets the boardwalk first. Boardwalk okay. and uh, uh, P. What's the uh, Pennsylvania Avenue? Pennsylvania Avenue. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. That's yeah. If you get, it's almost impossible to win the game if you don't get those two. It exactly. really is there because you land on them once. Maybe you could make it through twice. You're done. Yes, I, I don't. <laughs> I don't like losing money, so it's just right. who does, right? Who does? But right. Yeah. Does. Yeah, especially to your husband, that would be strong. <laughs> you don't want that. Side, we like go out in the back. We have like a. a back um area with a pool and we would just oh, go nice. yoga and, and try to make the best of it until after about a month we just kind of got antsy and tired and, but we, we we kept we kept our positivity up you know well that's good i i think that's all that we can we can do right now is just to try to be as positive and uh you know as we can they try to find some joy in the whole journey Absolutely. of this whole situation because there's nothing we can do about it. <laughs> so we just have to kind of wait. Well, and... I, I, people say it is what it is. And so yeah. we have to find a way to keep pushing and uh, finding a routine is important, you know, meditating and finding that. Day yeah. Day. yeah. And it's, I, I hope it's going to be interesting then once things are, uh, things are semi back to normal, ha- getting back to changing the routine again, is going to also be kind of weird, you know, it's be like, okay, now I'm going back to church. Now I'm doing all those things that I used to do without even thinking about it. And I think for us all to, well, for me to feel comfortable to go back to the regular routine, mm-hmm. it'll be like one of those things where you just kind of gradually ease into one thing, yeah. you know, I'm going to cry. I, it'll be emotional. <laughs> it'll be really, it'll be a lot, but, uh, but let's talk about your, your career. So what inspired you to get into acting? How did you initially start acting? Well, I was a, a professional dancer in mm-hmm. my early years. And at the time I did, I was about 21 and I did this, musical a broadway show called aida i yeah. love aida really oh it mm-hmm. was it was a great a great um show and i toured throughout the u.s and we did oh a my gosh. singing dancing acting and i kind of got the acting bug there and so i went back to new york i saved up my money and i started taking acting classes oh, wow. just to see if i even liked it you know Mm -hmm. I knew I loved to perform but I didn't know if I would love acting as much as or if I would even be good at it Mm -hmm. but I had a really good teacher who uh, inspired me to keep moving forward and she really believed in me and so I focused 100% on my acting career 
So, so you grew up taking dancing classes and, and, uh, and then were in, was in this Aida in as a dancer. Right. Yeah. And then it, it kind of inspired you to, uh, to look into acting more. Yeah. That's really cool. That's really interesting. And do you miss the, the dancing sometimes? Absolutely. I mean, mm-hmm. when I say I was a dancer, I danced from when I was a kid in the living room performing for my parents to, you know, college and, and anything. I would, I love to dance without even getting paid for it. So it's still in me. And when I watch videos or anything with people performing, I just, uh, I just wish that I could not do it professionally anymore, but like if we weren't in COVID right now, right. I class or just still, still dance because it's a part of me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know. I miss the arts so much. I will definitely, when I go, when I am able to go back to see musical theater again, I will cry. I will cry. This is the first year I will not, I will not get to see Christmas Carol live. Oh, wow. uh, for, I always see it every year. It's just part of, and so, yeah. <laughs> so, and I technically could, it is actually there, there is live theater in Utah, but I'm not, not, I'm not comfortable with that yet. Uh, especially with things, how they are right now in Utah. But, um, but uh, I just can't wait until, I will be so happy. I just love musical theater so much. Yeah. So I, I can understand why that would inspire you. And that show, I, I really love Aida. It is such a beautiful, beautiful show. I it love is- the songs. Oh, wait, did you see, where did you see it? I saw it here in Utah. They have, there's a theater here called Hale Center Theater, oh, um, yeah. which is uh, I, I don't know if you call it like semi-professional, but it's, it's very, it's not equity, but it's very, uh, very good uh, level. And they, they do great shows and I've, I've seen it. Uh, I've seen it there uh, twice actually over the years. And then I, I saw it at a high school actually that did it. Wow. it was, they were amazing and they were so good. Cool. And uh, so, yeah, I love the show. I think it's so good. And I mean, Heather Heedley in the, in the uh, Broadway, it was mm-hmm. unbelievable. Well, I saw it. So I got the, the, the job and they wanted us to go watch the performance. So I mm-hmm. was, uh, watched Heather Headley perform. She was amazing. Uh, unbelievable. My national tour was with, uh, her name is uh, Simone, and she is Nina Simone's daughter. Oh, wow. So she was amazing. Yeah, yeah. that's so cool. Uh, so you're, according to IMDb, your first role was in Sex and the City? Yep. Yeah. So person. you must have been freaking out when you got that part. Absolutely. Your very first part, such an iconic show. I was freaking out. And the funny thing is because for the audition, I went to like Nordstrom's and I bought this uh, cool, uh, I forgot the brand, Ann Taylor maybe, something soup. Really mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Put the tag on. <laughs> and I went to the audition and I, you know, the clothes really helped the character and it gave me this confidence. And so I booked the audition, uh, I booked the, the show, returned it to Nordstrom's. <laughs> but I was just so excited. And my roommate, Dawn, at the time, watched Sex in the City. Really mm-hmm. yeah. She was so excited for me. Yeah. I was so nervous, though. Yeah. <laughs> I only had like three lines, but it didn't. Yeah. <laughs> Still, for your first, that's that's a lot. Like a lot of people do uh, commercials or you know some different things like that uh, i did that no no, no. Oh, okay yeah. that and i did so many other smaller things but like you had some experience on camera then before that then a little bit yeah mm. well yeah that would be i would i always figure it's like you're that, that thing you do moment when you're on down the street ah, i can't believe it <laughs> I don't know how long we have, but um, I booked it because I was giving this attitude that the director wanted me to have. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. say the line like you've got better things to do with your. <laughs> okay, fine. So I get to the actual 
shoot and I see all uh, four of them and I just panic. I mean, the only thing that comes out when I'm nervous is smiles. So I have to say to them, enjoy your meal. And right. I kept, enjoy your meal. And the director comes over and he goes, so remember what you did at the audition with that attitude, you know, that bitchy. I was like, yes, 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 the bitchy, yeah. Okay, action, enjoy your meal. <laughs> like two or three times of him telling me uh he just gave up <laughs> that is really funny <laughs> i was still green in my acting i should have been able to just be the character mm -hmm. <laughs> that's funny i love that so so you've done a number of different shows over the years and it seems like you have a lot of variety you have more comedic shows and movies and then you have action you have horror stuff like that and I, I was just curious if that's kind of your style if you like doing a little bit of everything or just the way it's worked out um both okay I like doing a little bit of everything mm -hmm. I feel like being uh versatile keeps you working in this business and I decided early on that I really didn't want to be cast typed I don't know how much control I have over that but that was my thought mm -hmm. right it um and taking my acting seriously trying to um work on different characters and it just so happens that i kept booking different types of roles and different types of you know films and i think that makes it makes the work interesting yeah i would think so uh so when you do hawaii 5-0 is a, what's that you actually shoot do they shoot all of it in Oahu in Hawaii or yeah all of it in um uh oh my gosh Oahu yes sorry yeah, yeah. Oahu. uh so that must be pretty fun I mean I'm sure it's a, you're working of course so it's not all fun and in, in, in the sun but still oh, the worst it, place to be assigned right absolutely that was <laughs> as a matter of fact what was awesome about it was, and I won't go into too much detail, but I had just come up with a back injury and it was oh. painful for many, 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 many months. And I was offered this role about seven months after not, I wasn't working at all. And they just offered me this, you know, recurring guest role. And I was like, thank you, God, thank you for you know looking out for me. I haven't been able to work. And I've been in pain, but here is this blessing. And then I get to go to Hawaii. What? So yeah. just even, um, even more special, you know, because of that. That's so cool. I love Hawaii so much. And I love Oahu in particular. Oh, yeah. oh. Every time I wasn't working, which wasn't, I didn't work that much. Mm -hmm. I had like four or five days here. And I just, what do you do? You go to the beach. Oh, <laughs> right? Heaven. Heaven. Go to the North Shore and just, oh, that's the best. That is so cool. Uh, so you are currently on SWAT, the show SWAT, I guess, I and uh, with um, Shamar Moore. And I guess this is the second time you've worked with him on a show. This is, yes. The first yeah. Time. So what is that like being on that show and working with him? Oh, it was great. I mean, yeah. working with minds was, was awesome. And we had great chemistry. And when this role came up, I auditioned for it as well. And he really championed for me to get this character because he knew that we had chemistry from uh, Criminal Minds. So I was just grateful, you know, to him for for really going to bat for me. And it was, and it's been fun. I mean, everybody, the crew, the cast, the directors, they're all really cool and laid back over there. Mm-hmm. Cool. That sounds fun. Uh, so with this new movie, Christmas Tree Girls in Colorado uh, on Hallmark Channel. So how did you kind of get involved in this project? Uh, did you audition for it? Did they approach your agent? How did that work out? Well, this is another blessing because here we are in quarantine with nothing to do. And yeah. I call uh, end of June from my agent and manager saying, hey, you're offered, you're offered this role um, for Hallmark. And I was just like, really? People are working right now? <laughs> yeah. Vancouver, who, which I love. Like, I love Vancouver. I've mm -hmm. been so many times. 
And um, they just sent me the script. I read it and it was really a no brainer because obviously I'm not working. I want to work, but also it was just a really sweet, fun, loving um, story, which <laughs> could take me out of the chaos of low mm-hmm. I was like, absolutely. I'll do it. And you, were you familiar with Hallmark and Countdown to Christmas and all that? Had, had you um, watched in the past or? I actually, you... I, I'm ashamed to say I have not watched. I have many, many family members and friends who after I told them I'm in it, they're like, yeah, I've always watched. <laughs> they were really excited. They're like, oh my gosh, you're going to be on a Hallmark I'm... movie. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's great. That's very exciting. Yeah, we, I would be very excited if one of my friends, family members was on a Hallmark movie. That would be very cool. Uh, are, are you a fan of rom-coms in general? Yeah. That you, yeah. I love romantic comedies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What's one of your favorites? Um, I can go back to like Sleepless in Seattle. Mm-hmm. Uh, I love uh, I love anything Meg Ryan. Mm-hmm. I love Drew Barrymore. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> um, what's the one I just watched the other day? Uh, Wedding Singer. Oh yeah, you know, classic. And and it has you wouldn't believe it, but it has a Broadway musical that's not half bad. Wait, what? Yeah, Is- the Wedding Singer has the Broadway musical based on it. Well, that's, that's not that bad. You saw it? I, I have. Yeah, I saw it. I'm not on Broadway, but I saw it at the Hale Theater here in oh. Utah. It got nominated for a Tony. It's not that bad a show. Oh, it's, yes. it's pretty cute. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> um, so you should check that. You can probably find it online somewhere if you look. But, uh, uh, but yeah, it's it's a pretty it's a pretty good show. So, uh, yeah. So this movie uh, was written by our friend Samantha Herman, who we really enjoy. She's a great writer, and it was like. I guess loosely based on the classic novel, very loosely. They changed it. It was originally with Christmas Grows, Christmas Tree Grows in Brooklyn, uh, and, and but then they changed it to Colorado. Um, I mean, I'm guessing it's extremely loosely <laughs> at that point. But I yeah. don't. Know, why don't you tell us a little bit about the movie? Yes. Well, I think originally they wanted it to be to have taken place in Brooklyn, New York, but. Mm-hmm reasons because there's tree grows in brooklyn's classic oh, novel right so now it's a tree grows in colorado but so this is a fictitious town in colorado brooklyn colorado mm-hmm. and, oh, okay is, that's clever right which we we mention it in the film then uh my character erin chambers is the daughter of the mayor of the town and the most important thing right now is for them to get a beautiful spruce for their uh, big Christmas tree lighting. They're trying to bring back um, tourism to the town because the economy has not been doing so well. There's a, a man by the name of Mark Taylor. Uh, Mark Taylor plays Karen, Kevin uh, Snyder, who's a firefighter. And he happens to have the most beautiful tree on his lawn but he doesn't want to give it up and so Erin does the best she can, she can to try to convince him that he would be doing something great for the town and oh. what the story is about and there's some- that sounds fun uh, we interviewed Mark uh, I interviewed him not last year the year before actually believe it or not so i have met him and uh, i've interviewed him and he's really fun that must have been fun to work with him oh yeah, yeah. he's he's mm-hmm. a guy. It was, uh, yeah. a lot of fun that's cool uh, and uh, so you had all of uh, this filming in covid restrictions and everything uh what was that like uh, for you to be able to make this film Yes, uh, it was a little challenging because I had to, first I had to fly to Canada and quarantine for two weeks. Mm -hmm. Um, And then I got tested, negative, you know. uh, (laughs) At work, we would wear uh, face masks or a face shield. The hair makeup department, entire crew had to wear masks. I think it was probably more challenging for them because they had to wear it all day. I mean, we have to act, so we have to take it off. Mm -hmm. Uh, 
I was wondering how it would be just even for rehearsals. I was kind of like, well, well how is this going to, is it going to hinder my acting? But, you know, you get used to it. You just deal with it. Yeah. And there was a COVID specialist there to make sure that we kept our distance and sanitize our hands. So, you know, it's not the same as before, but you just got to keep it going. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's the great thing about America is that we are great at adapting to whatever situation gets sent our way. We adapt. And, uh, and I, I think you've seen a lot of that here uh, in this situation is we found a way to make it work. And I, I, I can't believe, I mean, I'm so blown away that they, that they managed to make 40 movies this, this year. I, I just can't. I couldn't believe it. I just kept thinking that life in the, you know, filming industry would, would just end for this year or something. Yeah. But they've managed, Hallmark has managed to just keep it going to find a way to find a way that's uh it's it's unbelievable do you do you think that the script had to be changed in order to accommodate covid as far as less festivals less group scenes that kind of thing good question um they i th- i believe we had less back oh we did we had less background than usual we mm-hmm. still festivities but it was just not as many um as many people as it would have been Mm -hmm. you know it was funny because this is so new for everyone people would have their masks on during rehearsal and when the director would call cut i mean would call action right (laughs) there was a lot of people forgetting to to take it down it was just so funny that is funny (laughs) I mean, we, we had an eye. We, we, this last weekend was the first weekend we saw uh, in any of the shots the COVID uh, lines, you know, that uh, spacing people apart uh, on in one of the, it was a, this, this is a movie with a, at a hotel kind of place. And that was the first time that we had actually, we were noticed any kind of COVID within the, the movie. On purpose, like, was was it written into the- no it was just part of it was just in the hotel i don't even think it was part of the movie but we're like oh there's that's the first time we saw a covid line was yeah. in uh it was in this movie because they have done such a great job of just making it look seamless and you never would know and uh so it's 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 extremely impressive and I mean, it's just good to hear from every, pretty much everybody I've talked to that they felt safe, that they, uh, you know, that they f- felt uh, comfortable as, as much as possible in the situation. Yeah, I did. I felt, I mean, in the beginning, I was a little nervous, but I did feel that we were being as safe as possible and mm-hmm. to feel comfortable and, and do my job because at the end of the day, mm-hmm. right, we're here to do a job and to bring something fun and to be able to connect with an audience. And, and people need that right now. They need some new material to take their minds off of what's happening. Yeah. Well, what do you think this film, A Christmas Tree, Girls in, in Colorado, what do you think it uh, has to say or will be a, a, a comforting thing for this particular this time? That we're well, in. I definitely think that people will be able to just be transported to a special place where they don't have to think about anything really negative. Um, it'll make them feel good, laugh, maybe cry. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot of beautiful messages in the film. There's mm-hmm. a young girl who was adopted. Um, they talk about adopting kids. Um, oh, that's cool. Yeah, there's um, a gay couple in it. So there's inclusion as well. And Mm -hmm. I think that those are really important messages for people to see themselves, you know, Mm -hmm. have them represented. I think so too. I think so too. And it's such a diverse cast, which is, which is fantastic. We we like to see for sure. Uh, So very good. Well, we're looking forward to, to the movie it's going to be a lot of fun well we like to end our interviews with some fun silly questions so 
here we go. First question. What is your favorite holiday drink? Hot cocoa or eggnog or whatever you like. Um, apple, apple cider. Hot oh, okay. Mm, that's good. Okay. What is your favorite holiday cookie or treat? I honestly can't. I love pumpkin everything during the mm -hmm. holiday. So pumpkin spice cookies, pot, pumpkin pie, pumpkin latte. Yeah. You're on the PSL, the pumpkin spice latte train. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. I know it was, it was interesting. People were on Twitter the other day. Someone was asking, what's the first thing that you're going to do uh, when all this is done? And so many of the people were like, I'm going to a coffee shop and I'm just going to hang out and relax and just drink my concise latte. I was like, that, <laughs> the little things that we didn't even realize were- Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So I think I have learned to appreciate the small things. So. Yeah. Okay, uh, next one. What is your favorite Christmas carol or song? Oh, geez, I love them all, but uh, it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Mm, that's a good one. Okay, what is your favorite classic Christmas movie? A Christmas Story. Oh, I love that one. Yeah, that one's really good. Uh, okay. What is your favorite holiday tradition? Uh, I guess I don't have a just every year I would go back home to New York and just have everyone over, all of my my family over to the house. Mm -hmm. you know, just see them because that's the only time I really got to see them. Yeah. So, just spending time with family. Mm-hmm. Very good. Uh, which do you like better, Scrooge or the Grinch? <laughs> uh, I'm going to say Scrooge. Yeah, very good. Okay. Uh, which do you like better, clear lights or colored? Oh, my goodness. I like them both. But honestly, I'm going to say clear lights because I like the classic look of it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Would you rather be in a snowball fight or build a snowman? Oh, I'll build the snowman. Don't throw any snow on me. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right. Would you consider yourself a good gift wrapper or not? I'm somewhere in the middle. I can't, okay. I'm not as good as when you pay someone, but I'm not as terrible as, you know. Yeah. That. <laughs> <laughs> Some people just need, just I'm use a gift it. bag. That's all. I mean. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Very good. Okay. Last question. Uh, do you have an ugly Christmas sweater? And no, I don't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, maybe they're in, maybe you can get an ugly Christmas t-shirt or something like that. Right. Well, somebody can buy me. Maybe I'll tell my husband to buy me an ugly Christmas. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> well, very good. Well, thank you very much for coming and talking with us. We really appreciate it. It was a lot of fun to get to know you. And uh, so if, if do you have social media that you'd like to share? I Oh, oh my social media? Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, you can find me at Rochelle eight four real the number four real uh, on Instagram as well as on Twitter. Great, and we'll have that all in the description section. And I will look forward to the new movie. And we hope you have a very very merry Christmas. Thank you. Merry Christmas to you as well. Uh, all right. Uh, let us know if you're listening and any questions and comments that you have, all the different things we talked about. We'd love to hear your thoughts. And uh, thanks again, Rochelle. This was really fun. And uh, hopefully we'll get to have you back on at another time. But uh, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs>